Yo, 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 yo. Yo, I know you guys are excited today because today we have a very, very, very exciting man to talk about. Somebody that is, I mean, come on. This is a guy that if you don't know him, you need to know him. If you know him, we're going to take this trip again to talk about this again. But today we're going to be talking about a very important man. So, yo, let's get right into it right now. All right. Right now we're going to get into it. So let's talk about Dr. Ernest Everett Just. Dr. Ernest Everett Just was a worldwide recognized scientist and also was one of the first African Americans to receive worldwide recognition for his biology works. Just also wrote science and academics writings as well. Ernest worked in many fields such as marine biology and is most famously known for his study of the whole cells under regular conditions rather than breaking them apart. Ernest also is recognized for the study of how cell surfaces play a role in the development of organisms. Ernest was born in Charleston, South Carolina in 1883 on August the 14th. His parents were Mary Just, who was a school teacher, and Charles Just, who was a dock builder. The family lived on Inspection Street, but then moved to Calhoun Street. With his father passing, his mother, Mary Just, saved money and bought land from the Hillsboro Plantation and renamed it Maryville. Mary also convinced many African Americans to move there and buy land. Soon after, Ernest's mother sent him to the high school of the Colored Normal Industrial Agricultural and Mechanical College in 1896, which was later named South Carolina State University. Ernest's mother did not believe in a Southern education and did not believe that it was good enough and thought that a Northern education was superior to a Southern education. Seeing that his mother didn't think that a Southern education was good enough, at 16, Ernest enrolled in Kimball Union Academy in New Hampshire in 1900. Ernest missed his mother while at school and traveled home after his second year at Kimball, but while returning home, he learned of his mother's death. Though Ernest mourned her death, he returned back to school. And while at the Union, he excelled in academics and social activities. He excelled so much that he graduated in three years instead of four from Kimball. After his graduation, he entered Dartmouth College in 1903. Ernest soon graduated magna cum laude from Dartmouth in 1907 with a minor in history. Ernest was also elected to a fraternity as well. Ernest won special honors in zoology and was a candidate to deliver a speech, but this was not allowed due to him being the only African American in school as well as winning almost every prize that there was. Once Ernest received his degree, he couldn't get a job at white universities. At the time, it did not matter how qualified or overqualified an African American was. So Ernest accepted a position at Howard University as an instructor of English and in 1909 later joined the Department of Biology. In 1912, he was promoted to head of zoology department, which was very new at the time at that university. Dr. Ernest also was one of the first people to find or to find Omega Sci-Fi in 1911. Omega Sci-Fi was the first black Greek letter organization founded at a historical black university. And three other students helped Ernest start this as well. Soon after Ernest took his head position uh, of zoology, he was introduced to the head department soon after of zoology of the University of Chicago, Frank R. Lilly. Frank R. Lilly invited Ernest to the Woods Hole in Massachusetts to become his research assistant at the MBL in 1909. MBL stands for Marine Biological Laboratory in which Frank R. Lilly was director of. During Ernest's time in the summer of 1909, he focused on experiments on eggs of marine invertebrates. Some of the matters he investigated were breeding habits of species and fertilization reaction. Ernest spent every summer for the next 20 years at MBL. Ernest, in 1912, married Ethel Highwarden, who taught German at Howard University, and also in which he had three children with. 
When Ernest spent time at MBL, he learned to handle invertebrate, embryos, and eggs. He became very skillful and his expertise became great demand by different researchers around the country. Ernest was an outstanding young scientist and in 1950 he took a leave of absence from Howard University to enroll in the advanced academic program at the University of Chicago. Also in 1915, Ernest was the first recipient of the NAACP Spin Medal. This medal was gave to him due to his scientific achievement. In 1916, Ernest received his PhD degree in zoology and was one of the very few African Americans who had gained a degree as far as a PhD from a major university. We must also note that the University of Chicago was amongst the top schools in America at the time. Ernest had published many research articles by the time he received his PhD. Ernest was also known as a genius in the design of experiments due to his careful and very planned out experiments. Even with all his accomplishments, he still was not accepted to a major American university. He wished for a position that would give him a steady income and spend more time or gave him more time to spend with his researches. He endured a life of constant rejection, though he was qualified. Howard at the time could not give him everything he needed and wanted to do. So with that being the case, in 1929, he traveled to Naples, Italy. While in Italy, he entered in the zoological station and conducted experiments there. Ernest, a year later, became the first American citizen to be invited to Berlin, Germany to the KW Institute. This was a very prestige event where Nobel Prize winners carried out their research. Ernest soon returned to America, but went back and forth for the next nine years to Europe to pursue research. He was treated as a celebrity and was pushed to continue his theory on ectoplasm on other species. In 1933, Nazis began to control Germany, so Ernest stopped his work and moved his studies to Paris, France. Ernest achieved many things that many still use to this day. We also must note that many base their studies on Ernest's works today as well. He opened a door to many experiments and findings and discovered many things such as what is known as fast block. Ernest wrote two books which are The Biology of the Cell Surface and The Basic Methods for Experiments on Eggs of Marine Animals and both of these books were published in 1939. He also published 70 papers in many different subjects, especially development of embryos and fertilization. Ernest during World War II was working in Paris, France on a paper at the time and while he was there, Germany invaded. Ernest during World War II was working in Paris on a paper at the time and while he was there, Germany invaded the area. France warned foreigners to leave, but Ernest stayed. German soldiers caught Ernest and he soon became a prisoner of war. He was then requested by the U.S. State Department and Germany returned him. Ernest returned to the U.S. in 1940, though Ernest had been very sick, very, very sick months before the invasion and this only got worse during his imprisonment in World War II. In 1941, he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and died soon after. So today we learned about a great man. There's still a lot of, uh, of his works being passed along through generation to generation. Uh, he's celebrated at different universities and around the world. And we learned about an important African-American man today. One of the most important biologists of you know, the 20th century. He was a very important man. And as I always say, yo, make sure you learn about all of our people and every person that's intelligent or every person that has done many things for the world because we're just not rappers we're just not you know uh, dancers we've done many things a lot of things throughout the whole world scientists you know entertainment uh, singers you know arts and crafts or artists like so many things so you'll always make sure you know your history yo each one teach one spread this to other people subscribe like as always and yo today we learned about another man that is very important in our history and decoding and unlocking our history and yo as i always say until next time one love peace
What's up? What's up? Hey. Shalom. What up? Hi. Happy Halloween! <laughs> <laughs> we buy 